Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunker down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this edition of What a Horse right before Thanksgiving. Yes, sir. And we'll be ready, buddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to some turkey myself. <laughs> Me I too. I really am now. I'm looking forward to it. Well, you do yours, and then we, we got some good video today. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles, along with your coat. And days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had since the last time you were here to old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. Welcome to Sam's Town Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. Instead of telling you about an affordable communication service that will save you money for a rainy day, I'm going to let one of my clients from Columbia Dental Group tell you all about Host My Services. You're not losing any service, your phone calls, you don't drop any calls, have any issues at all. They have the app where if you have an off-site person, they just have the app on their phone, they can use it from there. Like you should definitely get a quote because even buying a whole new phone system is cheaper than what you're gonna pay for with Verizon or AT&T or anybody else through them. And the quality is great. Just the customer service. Customer service, I talked to him. There's two things to remember when checking out Host My Communication Services. Number one is free analysis of your current communication cost. Number two is there's no capital outlay for the equipment. Two great reasons to call 931-581-4411 today and start saving for that rainy day. People in Tennessee are starting a movement. Out. Thank you. To clean up the litter on our roadways. Litter hurts our environment and endangers wildlife. And it affects our quality of life. Here, grab me. Thank you. Help keep our state litter free. Let's roll. Visit NobodyTrashesTennessee.com and be a part of the solution to end littering. Thank you. Saving the best for last. That's right. Nobody trashes Tennessee. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. All right. Well, we got a lot going on, but before we start in on everything, I want to remind everybody I still have some jewelry left that Christmas is coming up. And at the end of this, we're going to show a special item that I have that uh, a few ladies have looked at and really like. But I now it's time to get some of this stuff. That's right. That's some mighty fine jewelry right there. Well, we don't have all of it now, but we I've still got several of those pieces because I sold some to uh, a gentleman up in North Carolina, Mr. Clay Mills. He, uh, he bought several items for his girlfriend and his daughter. He uh, 
He reminded me, I thought I misprinted and put granddaughter, and he said, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> back up. <laughs> so, but I'm surprised I haven't sold that, that yeah, the animal. animal. Mm -hmm. Now, I, st I do still have it, but a lot of this is gone. But I do have a uh, real nice bracelet that somebody will uh, end up with that uh, just, I mean, it, it's beautiful. It's uh, heavy, but it's uh, weighs more than our action device, that right there. And we got action devices that don't weigh that. <laughs> and they say, we got a heavy chain. I guarantee you some lady's going to end up with that, and she ain't, she ain't going to care that it's heavier than one That's of our action devices. That's a unique looking piece right there. Well, it, it, it was special made. And um, there, we're working with that right there with Giles Dunn doing a few different designs. We used some of Richard's stuff. Yes. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful bracelet. I know uh, Sarah Coffee Burks thought it was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we have, uh, this week, I've, I've got several different text messages, and uh, on the internet, there was a, a saddlebred lady that really, really came after us big time. But to be honest, She's guilty of the same thing. I've, I had one lady send me some pictures of, of her training techniques, and uh, I wouldn't let nobody do that to my horse. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they, can, they can preach and say, well, you do this and you do that, but you and I was talking about the scenario about the mouse, mouse trap, trap. Mm -hmm. which for 50 years, the walking horse industry has worked hard in making everything better and adjusting and, and creating new training methods to move forward to where now you, you can't find a problem with our horse. You have to create one, Yes, which that's been proven and, and we're in court now because of it, uh, that using field scars and everything else to attack our horse with, while other breeds have sat back there and said, well, we're okay. Well, now they find out that, hey, they should have took care of that mouse trap to start with. That's right. Because while we've been improving, they haven't. And now when you look at it, like their horses, you can see there. If that was a walking horse, it would have gone back to the barn and the guy would have had a USDA violation, a federal ticket. That one's the same thing. If a walking horse moved like that, Jerry, I believe they'll be excluding you out of there. Hey, they would. But see, this, this is what, they didn't get it. Yes. And they still don't get it. That's what they're facing. And they still won't say, well, it's your fault. No, I beg to pardon. It is not our fault. They lied for 50 years. They lied. They said, no, we don't have no violations. And then they found out that, yes, they had been, had trainers found guilty that they caught using chemicals and different things that they suspended, but they didn't report it. They swept it under the rug yes. like, like mm -hmm. you do dust, you do, put it under the rug. Well, now it's all come out. So they're more guilty, the saddlebreds are, than we are. Oh yeah. I mean, their horses are treated far worse than our, and, but they use techniques with the, with the saddlebreds that I'd never, never allowed to be done with my horse. And, and you know the things I'm talking about, the, where they try to scare them animals to death. That, that's not right. And uh, I mean, people say, well, Jerry, you shouldn't badmouth the saddlebreds. All I'm doing is throwing the ball right back at them. They want to badmouth us and pretend they're lily white when in all honesty, they're not lily white. Well, it's just like anything else, Jerry. You know, you got good and bad in every breed that you fool with. I ain't gonna say all celebrate people that way, but you got some just like in any other breed of horse. You know what I'm talking about? So That's I mean, it. and to me, my biggest thing of it is, you got, if you find somebody doing wrong, you got to punish that person, not the whole breed That's of the animal. That's it. But there's no sense in them sitting out there and pointing a the finger at us saying, well, yes. y'all do this and y'all do that. And you live in a glass house yourself. That's it. So, I mean, that, that's just like, 
I mean, it's it's just not right. It, I don't care what you say. You can you can do it. You can walk the walk, but you can't talk the talk. Yes. It's like this lady that was doing all the attacking. Well, several people started pointing out facts to her about her breed and things that was going on. And boy, she couldn't stand that, so she blocked them. She blocks them to where the facts are not out there. Uh, that's well and fine. You, you can stick your head in the sand all you want to, but the, the lines are still there. You know, so, you, you don't believe how many people out there don't think a horse should be rode at all. Oh, I know. You got a lot of people don't think a horse should not have no shoes on. That's right. So regardless, if you're a walking horse trainer, saddle bread trainer, quarter horse trainer, you still got them folks out there that still think the same way. You know, I talked to someone the other day, Jerry, that uh, they was talking about this lady kept complaining about her horse going lame. And she was asked, said, well, uh, what type of shoe do you use? Oh, we don't shoe him. We trail ride him, but we don't we don't put no shoes on my horse. I don't want to. But your horse is going lame. Have you ever thought that maybe if you shot him, he wouldn't go lame soft? Well, the people, a lot of people don't realize a shoe on a horse is just like you going outside with shoes on your feet. Now you can walk across that gravel road out there all day long, but now if you go out there barefoot, you are gonna tip around through there. You know what I mean, so I mean, you got to have some kind of protection in the bottom of that foot to stop you from feeling the gravel or whatever that's on them horse's feet. You know what really, really describes that is this. If one horse with no shoes, now think about this people, one horse unshod, the Indians wouldn't have needed as many different ponies. Yeah, that's right. They, they would just had one pony. They wouldn't have wanted a bunch of ponies. They knew then what some of the people today don't realize. Yes. That if you ride a horse, now out in the pasture, you got horses out there that are non-shod, your, your brood mares and things, that's one thing. But you're riding these horses, that's another thing. If you didn't need shoes on them, they never would have shot them for the cavalry. They never would have done that. The shoe, there wouldn't have been no use for it. Yes. The shoe was built for a purpose. The and this is what people need to realize, because the Indians knew it, but we still got people today that think they know all this about a horse, and they don't know that if you really want to protect that horse's foot, and you're going to be trail riding or something, then you, you need to shoot yeah, the horse. Yeah, you need to shoot a horse, that's so right. It, it's just common sense. To pick his you soul know, just, up off the ground. That's it, just mm -hmm. use a little common sense. Now there's times when, when you don't want to, and I understand that, but my God, it, it's just, pe people don't think, they, they figure that, well, I don't like it, so I don't want you to have yes. it. That's like, uh, I'm going to wear this gray shirt today, so I don't want you to wear yours. Yes. I mean, it, it's just silliness, but people not thinking or stop to think and, and wonder what's going on, so that's just it. Tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move ahead a little bit quicker because I know during these, while we're talking, we're going to come up with something sooner or later. We're going to run over. But we lost a uh, a true champion to a good friend of mine that lives out in California. And uh, he, uh, Jim Hiding, he uh, won world championships and world grand championships with this horse. but. Last week we lost Dragonfire, and uh, there he is, Western Park Pleasure Walk North Canner World Grand Champion winner, Dragonfire. Now this is Jamie Thomas there, Thompson, for Jim Heidi. But Jim won his share of blue ribbons on this horse too. Jim, that was a nice horse, real nice horse. Oh, he's a beautiful horse, and, and Jim has worked with the, the Breeders Association too. Work, been over there, so he, uh, there's a lot going on in this world, believe me. And, and Jim works hard with, for the horse. These horses right here, now he's a California horse. Yes. And there's Jim. 
every time I see him, I think uh, Custer. Yeah. <laughs> Owner Amateur Western Park Pleasure World Grand Champion. Jim described that horse as being one of a kind. Yeah. Everybody feels that way about their horses. But now look at the way he goes. Just he, gets her done. That's right, baby. real nice, gets smooth. Her done. Smooth. Fold in 97. Dragonfire. I I hated when I heard that because I yeah. know I know Jim really really loved Little that horse. He mm -hmm. really did. All right, and then when we go to we well, you was there, we had a little roundtable discussion down there with several trainers. Some of them just kicked back watching the workout, but every year when we go to Tunica, and this happens at a lot of the shows, these three day shows. Everybody in the morning's out there getting their horses ready for the shows that night. And they'll serve breakfast, a little bit of everything. But all the people out there, the camaraderie, the conversations you have, a lot of horses are bought and sold yeah. at this time. Just people, just uh, Tunica is one of them special places where everybody has a good time. Well, that, I mean, that's that's what you call family right there. I mean, that's a bunch of horse people out there that come together. You're talking to people that you haven't talked to in a long period of time, and you get to see them. I mean, we was there, and I mean, I got to see people that I haven't seen in a while, and I got to meet a lot of different people that I haven't met before because of this horse, you know? Well, everybody gets around. Of course, we all ended up over at the table, though. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting over there just drinking coffee and and shooting the bull, but there was a lot going on, and they they serve breakfast there every morning. The sausage and biscuits are pretty good. Yes, but I mean that's that's what you call a, a family gathering right there. Oh yeah, everybody just talking, and you can see them out there riding their horses, getting ready, and and that that that's what the fun of it is, and you get an idea of what you're going to see that night, that morning, <laughs> and some of them some of it you. You don't see that night. Like they was riding in the rain, but also back at the back, if back yeah. outside they was riding. So every, everybody just joined in, had a good time, eating breakfast, drinking coffee, juice. I always loved it. You know the overnight horse shows yeah. like that. You know, yeah. there's a yeah. lot of times I didn't took a, a customer that went looking for a horse and ended up with a new horse well, because they seen horse, something because they saw something they saw something they, like. they really like. You know. Well, I know. Uh, that was a Mason Dixon line sold while we was yeah. down there one year. So they they watched him go around two or three times. He said, I gotta have him. He got him. And I will say this, they were I turned them down, but now there was a few people like them Bloody Marys. But mm -hmm. I'm not a I'm not, not a Bloody Mary type of guy. <laughs> I just I just don't care for them Bloody Marys. All right, we're gonna watch some good videos now because the horse show they had in Tunica was uh, it, it was it was an outstanding. It show. It was a good show. They had a lot of good horses. There's one of them that I really like, General Thomas J. Jackson and Alan Cotter. When I saw this horse, I, I was sitting there. I told CJ, I said, I've got to get them to do a victory pass on that horse because he's a bad cat. Yes, he's a good and he horse. Was, and he won the week before. Yeah. And he won at the uh, the last show at the Cooper Steel Arena. Co Cooper Steel Arena, and then went down there, and, and it was an open competition. Yeah. And then he went down there and won, won the amateur, amateur mm -hmm. competition with Shannon. She's a super nice That lady. is a nice horse. See, that was the week before at the Celebration Fall Classic where Michael rode. Mm -hmm. That's a big bay horse. I like him. I like him a lot. Michael and Casey does a good job with the horses. Oh, they do. Yeah. They do a mighty good job with these horses. Sure do. Getting better and better. Yeah. Right there is Jose's Havana Knights and Kathy Baker. Now she was tickled. 
Yeah, that's a good horse. Real good horse. That horse been good for a good while on Howard East Street only. Used to own him at one time and he won a bunch with that horse. He gets it done. Kathy just loves the show. She loves the show. She does. She loves the show. Kathy been showing for a long time too. She yep. been in this horse business. She enjoys it. And that's yep. the main thing. You gotta enjoy it. Star power. CC. Amy Rick. It's another real good horse right here. Hey. Amy had a, had a field day, in, and and Mickey showed that yes. horse once. So that horse showed three times at one horse show in a three day show. I mean, that's a nice, that's a real nice horse. Horses. That just goes to show what care is given to these horses. Yes. And what kind of athlete these horses are. Oh, tell me about it. Now she was good. There she is in the 15 2 and under. She won the pony, come right back with a 15 2 and under class. Amy's super nice. She, yeah, she, she is. is. Now she is a horse lover. You bet on that. Megadon. Wilder Way. You know, I've seen back in the 40s where they uh, hit one of them Megadon charts. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, wasn't that? that young man right there does a good job of riding, you know. That's wow. what it's all about. <laughs> Wilder gets it, got, got in an argument with his mother because she wouldn't let him go back to the horse show Saturday after he got <laughs> eagled. <laughs> he was fussing and wanting to go to the horse show. He is a pistol. And I, I'm going to tell you, this Georgia High Honor and Reggie Newsom, that horse, that, that horse just uh, he, a good horse. He is a good horse, and Reggie does a good job. Ray Abernathy did a good thing letting him show that yeah. horse. And buddy, he showed it. Reggie works over at Acre, having yep. that thing, you know. Well, put a good one in there. Yep. Here's 401k and Pam Betts. You know, Pam showed performance for years yes. and years, and then she. And had a bunch of good ones, too. Oh, and now yeah. she got good ones in this division here. Yeah. She just stepped down and said, I'm just going to be a country girl, yep. be a cowgirl. Every girl wants to be a cowgirl. She's no stranger to that winter circle. Oh, Lord, no. <laughs> there are a lot. She won twice in Dunica. Yeah. And that's a, that's a competitive class. Oh, yeah, that's a real good that, competitive that class. One very competitive class. But I'm going to tell you something about them Pledge horses. They had three or four horses there that sold over $100,000. Yep. That somebody paid over 100000 for it. So, you know, that's that's a lot for, that's for a lot for, a, for, a, for any horse. Yeah. You know, but I mean. Right here, Tea Time Charlie and Allie Joe Jacob. She had a good end of the year, buddy. Yeah. Now, she, she made some good shows down there. And she did a fantastic job presenting the play. Yes. That's the young lady that works at it all the time. Yeah, she does. <laughs> it's no gimme when it comes to her. No. You know? Tea time, Charlie. And here's first night out. You know, you talk about them horses that sell them for a hundred thousand dollars. We're going to be showing one a little bit later. That if you compare it to some of these right now, yeah, it's a it's a good one and it's flat shot. I 
I mean, the more I think about it, I've mentioned it to you. It's, with the back end that she's got, I ain't so sure that we couldn't go performance. And here's what made the day, buddy. <laughs> Mr. True Blue and Ali Joe Jacob. Oh yeah, that's nice now, real nice. And she rode me, didn't she? She did. She done a terrific job on that horse. I thought she did. There's two good ones in there, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. There was another, the other horse in there was good. They went after it. And here's Colfax. A lot of people cheering this one on, though. I'm going to tell you, that horse is. Everything about him just suits me to a T. Oh yeah, that's a good horse. Blaze does an outstanding job with that horse, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm, she does, she does a good a job. super good job with him, yep. I thought. Well, we had one that dropped through the cracks last week when we was doing this that we were supposed to show. So we're going to show the entire class this week. And because uh, it was, uh, why we, we ain't figured out yet. Because, but that's when you're dealing with computers and videos. If, if the T ain't crossed or the I ain't dotted, sometimes things can happen. Oh, yes. But we're, before we do that, though, we're going to let you do your job. We'll be right back after these messages. Giles Dunn is a leader in both cultured and lab-grown diamonds. Located at 234 North Jackson Street in Tullahoma, Tennessee, Giles Dunn is well known for his beautifully designed jewelry. From that special diamond for your special wedding day to the one that says I love you more, Giles Dunn is the place to shop if you want to say it with diamonds. Open five days a week and always ready to assist you in that one in a lifetime purchase. To set an appointment for cultured or lab grown diamond viewing, call 931-563-7800. Hey Tennessee, Ross Chastain here, the guy who likes to smash watermelons on the front stretch at Nashville Super Speedway. But you know what I never smash? Safety rules. Racing's all about control and the same goes for life on the road. So use your melon and don't mix drinking and driving. It's like trying to race with a busted engine. Be a pit crew hero. And if you've had a few, pass the keys to a sober friend because we're all racing toward a safer Tennessee and we want you there at the finish line. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. And this is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. You know, Jerry, we were talking about Christmas and everything, and uh, and I'm just throwing this in there. Now is a good time to be looking at buying horses. Yes. Uh, a lot of people just want to sell some, but I think that after everything's said and done, that we as an industry are going to be okay. And, I, and the reason I feel that is because people have worked hard in all the studies, no matter what the USDA and the Humane Society wants to say, all the studies show that the action device in our shoes do not harm, harm the horse at all. Everything that harms a horse is against the law anyway. Yes. So if you want to stop something, you want to stop somebody from robbing a bank, catch the one robbing well, the bank. That's don't, right. Don't catch the people making their deposit. Yeah, and that, that's my whole biggest thing about it, you know. Well, that, that's what I'm, I'm looking at, and I just can't see how 
destroying an industry and the collateral damage of destroying that industry. Yeah. Because there, there is a tremendous amount of collateral damage to the manufacturing, the retail, uh, housing. I mean, you go across the board and just in Shelbyville, you're talking about $40 million impact over two weeks? Yes. Well, think about all the impact it has, like in Tunica last week when we went to Tunica for the horse show, or look at the North Carolina show, look, look at the Clemson show, look at East Tennessee, look at all these places that receive a major impact when there's a three-day horse, horse show. You, yeah, you, and, you're and, exactly right on that, Jerry. And, and we got tax shops, filling stations. So to me, to destroy an industry because someone said that they don't like a horse wearing pads and action device. I mean, if, 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 if it was really harmful to the horse, but it's not. Yeah, no. Nah. That's the whole deal, it's not. And, and that's what I keep fighting. I mean, I know we got some bad apples, but I can go around here and I can show you a lot of bad apples and, and a lot of different sports, period, from baseball, football, basketball, tennis. Oh, anything in, in the world gonna have bad people, gonna have bad people and good people. I mean, that's just like you go to New York, a lot of people get scared of New York because they're talking about the killing and the robbing, but everybody they ain't that way. But you got to take care of the person that's doing that. Yeah, I'll tell you something else, and, and this is a good point. Chicago now has more crime and more killings, but they got a ban on guns. Yeah. Then you got other locations where they don't have a don't have to have a carry permit or anything. You just carry a gun. They don't have near the crime. Yes. So doing taking away things does not solve problems. You have to attack the problem, and the problem is the person, not not what we're, not the pads, not the action device. Yes, that's right. But if there's a person that is abusing the rules and regulations, go after him for what he's doing. Don't create a problem like a field scar or something. I mean, honestly, look at it and get the problem. To me, that, that's, that's the honest way, the ethical way to get it done. So, all right, I've got my field. Am I, am you, I done? You've done a good job, I'm <laughs> going to tell you. Did I say it? <laughs> this right here was a two-year-old marrying gilding class, and buddy, it was, this was a tough class. Oh, yes. And I mean tough. Class. Lizzie McGuire and Tim Smith took the blue for Bruce and Robin McDonald. Charlie's Perfect Peach and R.M. Kelly for Kathy Baker. Honors Miss Jose Drew Grace for Doug Choir. I'm the dictator, Dick Peoples, or Dick Peoples. I was proud of Dick, that was a good horse. Good gracious, Reggie Newsom, Andy Rippey. Lucky as I am, Michael Wright for Ricky Ferguson. The honor student, Lake Weaver, Ronnie Loxton. And Jose's hard, hard time, Hannah, Edgar Abernathy for Billy Tiplett. For Tippett. But look at look at my man there. Dick is real good with them horses now. Dick is a trainer. Oh yeah. Now he is a horse trainer. You know in this industry, Jerry, you got horse trainers, you got maintainers. Yeah. And you catch a lot of these older guys, and you got some young guys as horse trainers. Oh yeah. But you, you but you know, but it's a difference. But when you got a good horse trainer and a good rider working together. That's right. You've got a combination. Dick, Dick gets out there, and I, I said this. I tell you, this, this class here was a, a real, a real super class right here. Had a bunch of good horses. Drew, I mean, Drew does a, a good job. A real good job. I tell you, Drew had a real good show up at that horse show. Yeah, he did. Yeah, did real well. 
But now that coat, that horse, that Tim Smith riding for Bruce and them, I'm gonna tell you, he's hey, he's, he's one a piece of, of work. He yeah, is. He's nice. He's a nice horse. And that was a good class. Yeah. There he is, Dizzy McGuire and Tim Smith for Bruce and Robin McDonald. I thought that Billy right there made a heck of a show. Bruce lined up on that. Oh, yeah. Is he, I like that name too. Oh yeah, that's a good Is one. Is McGuire? Always a good one. Now we got something special. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy showing this. We can sit here and watch what's going on, but uh, I've shown different videos of you trimming these horses and the babies and everything, and I've had people make all kinds of comments about I know that our honor stud, you've, you've trimmed him since he was a baby, and he just stands there and lets you go at it. Yeah. Now this one, and I want y'all to understand, during celebration, Jerry got hurt pretty yes. pretty, pretty bad, and uh, Bria broken and everything else. But he had this mare, and I'm proud to say it's my mare, in there, and he decides he's going to do a clipping and he's gonna do it with her. And I was tickled, cause she's the one that uh, I've got for sale, but it shows how much sense some of these horses have. And this is the first time this filly have been called out of a stall oh, no. and everything in the cross stall <coughs> too. Being the first time, but well, we got her into the stall and like never caught her. Once you got her yeah. caught, we did fool around with her a little bit, but then you brought her into the cross tie and it's the first time she'd ever been in the cross tie and he decides to trim her. So I want everybody to just kick back and enjoy this because it gets good. Hey, the gentlemen, here I am, Jerry Williams, here at DNG Table. We got this skill here for the first time, LP clip. You know, I try to clip mine without holding on twitch and teach him, try to teach him a lesson right here. So we're gonna start off with a nose first. We're gonna get here, we're gonna trim a nose there. You know, she gonna thresh around a little bit, but you know, that comes forward with, with horses and all that stuff. They're animals. And you just try to teach them. But ain't no sense of fighting them and making them do things that they don't really want to do, you know. But you just sit there and you keep them kind of confined when they head down, when they can't grab up, you know, or fight you or nothing like that. But you just take your time and be patient. You can teach them a lot of stuff. A lot of people want to do it the quick way, but last, a lot of times, Fashion is ain't the best. But now you hold on right here. Now she might, she looks like she may throw a little bit here. You got her eyes all big. Right here. You clip over her eyes a little bit. Whoa, whoa, babe. Good girl, good girl. Good, good. You're doing good. Oh, and it's been pasty. Oh, now. And we're going to try something right here. We're going to try to clip over her head, her brow pants right here. And see, can we get her to relax? And you can always tell when a horse goes to relaxing, because their eyes won't show so much white in there, you know, and she's kind of giving in, and she knows that she's caught and everything. <laughs> okay, well, take your time, easy. Now, well, we're gonna try some here, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this might be a disaster, but we're gonna try it anyway. Well, whoa, 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 now, easy. See, she's, she, see how her eyes got bucked up right there? She made my eyes buck up a little bit. You got to kind of watch it. Just a little. Oh, now. Easy. You always got to do it. You're going to get it now. We just going to stay here. And she gonna, she'll learn that she's going to feel like that she can't do what she want to do. We got to sit here. We got to hold oh, now. Easy, girl. Easy, girl. Easy. Now, take your time. Easy. Whoa. I know this is your first time, but this might be the first time to be in a world grand champion. Your first clip. We're gonna make you see him and make you look beautified here just a little bit. You got to kind of watch him. And everything. Whoa, what are you doing? She's doing a good job right here. Good girl.
clipping these horses for the first time, it ain't for the weak hearted. You got to have a little nerves to do this. Because the more you jump, the more they gonna jump. They feel comfortable. If you are comfortable, they gonna be feel comfortable. Oh man, oh girl. Hold on. Make sure we don't cut too far that back on that brow pass that roll now. Hold on. She gonna look a lot different when we get through here. Hold on. Hold on. Now we're gonna ease down. And we're gonna wipe some of this off of her roll baby. Easy now. Good girl. Good. Good now. Good. We're gonna get that folk out. Up a little bit. We'll try to straighten it up a little bit. And we're going to try to, to thin that thing out a little bit with her not throwing a fit. Well, you know, a little thing tickling on her ear right here. Well, hold down. Well, hold down. We're going to try to trim up a little bit. And, when, you know, most time when I clip one, I clip down instead of up. Because if you clip up and she jump, you can cut a whole photo top off. But you try to take it and tell her easy. Easy, everything gonna be all right. Just kind of grab her ear, right there, and let her just focus and go down with it. Go down, stroke. Oh yeah. Oh. I don't want to cut too much off of a folk top because I don't know what kind of position she's gonna make. She might make a show performance horse, or she might be a pleasure horse. And a lot of pleasure horses like a lot of folk top. Now we're gonna do some here. That might be a little dangerous, but we're gonna try. We're gonna try to clip her ears without no twitch. Now I want everybody to look and see. There's no twitch around the ears. So here we go. One, two, three. Let's go. Let's try and see what happens. Whoa, now. Easy. 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 Whoa, a lot of time you talk to them, you tell them how much you really care about them how precious they are and how beautiful they're going to be. A lot of time it works. A horse is just like a human. If you sit there and talk nice to them, you can get a lot more done with them than talking ugly and rude to them. And I have worked around a lot of people that talk ugly and rude to people. And a little bit. Easy, easy, see she? But she's going to relax. See, you didn't, you didn't go back. I didn't jump, didn't run. She just, she gonna have a reaction because she's an animal. You know, she gonna be all right. She be all right, she's, just like I said, she's a young one. Well now, easy, take your time. The next time you get a clip, you'll be a lot better. Well now, easy. You know, ain't no sense of getting up here and getting something and thrashing them or something like that, you know. You just take your time to talk to them. Because they're baby, they don't know. Go on that Easy, it'll be all right. We're just trying to get your horse. I'll tell you, this is pretty good for the first time. Yeah. Ain't too bad. You know, we ain't going to do a great job. We just want to get the basics down and just kind of clip her just a little bit where she kind of get used to it. Just a little bit. Slow now. We ain't going to fight her too much. We're just trying to get her where she just... Kind of easy. We're going to relax. So let her relax. Rub on her a little bit. Let her just kind of get used to it. We're going to try to get a little bit more of this hair off his ear. Just a little bit more. <laughs> and next time we clip her, she'll be a lot easier. she kind of have the idea of what she's supposed to be doing. Okay, oh, easy now, easy. Relax, relax. Take your time. Oh, you know, that ain't the best job it is, but she's pretty good to say she had not had this done. Oh. oh, now this is the way I do it. Now I ain't saying that everybody has to do it this way, but this is the way I do it. 
doing with him. And she's doing your other friends, but you just kind of sit there and you talk to her. And you tell her, easy, everything will be all right. Everything's going to be good. Oh, man, easy. Patience is the best thing when you're fooling with a horse. If you ever wake up in the morning and you don't have a lot of patience, don't fool with a horse that day. Because these horses got to have patience. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Oh, easy, easy. We didn't cut our, our eyebrows off. We just cut our eyelashes at the bottom. We just kind of cut them off a little bit. Now we're going to try it another year and see how this goes. Whoa, we're almost there. you almost done. you halfway done. Let's see how this works. Easy, easy. Take your time. Good girl. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We try to get this done without having no kind of chaos and no kind of fighting or wrestling or anything like that. And let her be this a good experience for her for the first time. You know, just like I say, horses just like people. The first experience is the best experience. Oh no. You know, it's taking me a little longer than normally it would, but you got to realize, this is the first time. Did she ever had this done? First time lady Jim, she had been in the cross top. This one thing I love doing is going with these young coats like that, clipping for the first time. Kind of imprinting them. Whoa, whoa, that was close. Almost broke them, but I caught them. <laughs> that would've been bad right there, ladies and gentlemen. You know, these things cost pretty high. <laughs> and you know, around here at J&J &J Stables, we work on a budget. <laughs> I think I've been having these clips ever since I was a kid. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's easy, almost done. Almost, we ain't gonna aggravate you too much more this time. Let's trim this full top up just a little bit more. Let's see, can we get her just a little bit? Like I say, I'm going away from my full top. Down from it, not towards it. Because, you know, if you ever look at a horse and he don't have no full top, somebody clipped towards the full top. And he jumped and you cooked it off. I just had a few people in my lifetime I know have done that before. Oh, man. Easy, girl. Easy. Now, look how much better that look than she did when she first started off. Look. Easy, girl. Easy. Easy now. I'm going to let my camera keep filming right there and I'm going to get this brush and I'll brush her off, brush her top off to make her look presentable. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take our time and then let her just kind of get used to it. Oh, now, easy. She, she's smart, I tell you. Look jumpy, but now her bloodline makes her look jumpy. Slow baby, slow now. Easy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this mane on the other side here. We're gonna do all in one in this mare in one day. We clip her, brush her, call her, all oh, one day. Tell you, Jerry, then that I found out you can for an old man. You can move pretty fast <laughs> when she gets rowdy. You, you got to be quick on your feet sometimes. But now this is the one that I posted on Facebook. I had told different people that I was going to try doing some auctions on Facebook. We've got a lady that has bid five thousand on this one right here. So November the thirtieth, whoever's the 
high bid on the owner. I'll tell you, that's a that's a real pretty filly too. Oh, sure. I mean, she's, she's pretty. She's pretty. She moves good. Yes. Pretty smart. Yes, she is. I think she'd be the right size for any horse, you know, any person or something she's like that. You know? a, she's not going to be a real big horse. Not a big one, or a little, but I think she's going to be the right size and, you know, well, you can have a lot of fun with her. And just like you say, you know, this had been, she had been fooled with a lot because, like I said, I was hurt at the celebration yeah. and I was putting behind on a lot of them. But I mean, but she's we just now started, and yes. she's been ridden. So hey, we just keep riding her, and we'll see what she can do. That's right. Oh, we got to go to commercial again. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. More of What a Horse coming up. Well, welcome back. Well, now we're going to go to some video of another horse that we're going to be selling. This is a flat shot, but we had even thought about taking and putting pads on her because she's three years old now. Yes, uh huh. And uh, her name is Deal's Dancing Lady, and she's a heck of a trail horse. And matter of fact, we put her through boot camp. Yes. And she did great doing the trails, wading the water and all this, but they kept saying, Jerry, I don't know about trail horse with her, said she's a good sized mare. Yeah. Said, uh, and she got good back in, and she does. And that's why I keep thinking that maybe we put pads on her and see if she wouldn't make You don't good. never know, you know, some of these horses. Yeah, because she, uh, she she's got everything it takes. Yes, she moves right and it moves real good. Well, she uses that back end too. Yes. So it's uh, it's something to think about. Give us some to consideration to. Because you never can tell. And you know some of them bigger horses like this filly right here takes a little longer before you and be good to put the pads on try on pads because her, she's big enough and she can handle yeah. herself. I mean, this filly is right at what you measured her, and what was she? She's sixteen one. She's sixteen one. You know. Sure is. Her knees is good and closed, and everything else. So I mean, you never. You, it might not be a bad idea to do yeah. it, Jerry. That might be one of the best <laughs> ideas you can come up with in a long time, right there. Well, I do think out of the box every now and then, because <laughs> she's a pretty thing. And I mean, that's just a little kick shoe, and she got a little snappy up uh, front with her legs and stuff like that, you know. Well, you talked me into it. <laughs> <laughs> Amber does a good job riding. Yeah, the horse. Amber it was does a good job. Windy out there that day too. Yeah. I mean, I windy. tell you, she has been a lifesaver for me since I've been hurt and stuff like yeah. that to help me a lot. Well, she's got a good set of hands. Yes, she's a good jockey now. She can ride. But yeah, she uses her back end yes. good. She use got a good head shape. And 
and he's one of these you put out there on that eBay horse sale thing. If as big as she is, yes. as pretty she is, mm -hmm. they want her for field trials and everything else. But I really think that uh, put a little package on her and see what she'll see do. See what she do, you know. We can start off with a park performance package. Yeah. Just see how she acts. She's a big size field. That's what I like about her. Yeah. Yeah. And very easy nature, you know, very, very mild, don't have no, you know. Well, that's, that, I'm going <coughs> to tell you, a lot of people, I, I say this, and I've said it before, the deal horses are intelligent. Now, they're smart. They catch on quick. And, and I've noticed this with, with the different ones, Serp, these others that we've had. They, they just, I don't know, it's just something about them that they, they, their temperament yes. is not, it's not rambunctious. No, they are. Uh, they are very easy to fool with. And, but it makes it easier to get along with. And, and I right. tell you, even the deal mares, the ones you turn to be brew mares, turn yeah. out, and they pass that on to the coats well, and stuff like that. that that's is, a good thing, too. Real good thing. That's like the, the Pap coat, you know. <laughs> she He's very easy. Pap? Now, yeah. but, I tell you what, you walk up to the door, and here he comes. But he's going to come straight up yes. that door because he... He likes to be around people. I noticed I, I held your granddaughter up there the other day. Here he yeah. come. He come right over there. So it, it's something to look at. And you know, I looked up, and everybody's all the time talking about this and that. We've got a video that I did of Mr. Harlan. Uh, that's, that was Pap we just mm -hmm. now showed. That we did of Mr. Harlan, and he was talking about the breeding and everything, and he's one of the best breeders ever was. And prior to midnight was a major breeder. People wanted that. Never was world grand champion, yes. never was world champion, never showed at celebration. So, but he produced so many good horses that it was not funny. And there was reasons why nobody really wanted to show the horse. I think he showed seven times. But we're, I'm going to have CJ get that video up, and we're going to show it probably after the first year during Christmas, let people see some of the older generations on what they said about horses. Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. I want everybody to have a good Thanksgiving, eat a lot of turkey. Yes. And you eat a lot of turkey. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone out there, and I hope everybody have a Safe trip if they're going out of town somewhere. Yep. Be careful. See you next week. Be careful. See you later. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left Hunger down low and reach high to the sky Got my rhythm down pat, so they say I'm looking like a winner in every way So when I hear somebody say, what a horse I know they're talking about me, of course And I'm gonna be in that winner circle someday I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, peace, start talking.